Right guys, as mentioned in the previous video, I'm slightly reinventing my channel. First one, let's look at some super facts about the six eyed sand spider. Let's do this. Right guys, so as I alluded to in the intro of this video, this video is all about this little beast. Tiny little sling at the moment, but this is my six eyed sand spider. Now first I'll apologise to those in the hobby, I have completely forgot the Latin name. So I'll probably drive people crazy by referring to this as the six eyed sand spider. And um, my first fact will be reasoning behind why people don't like common names. And that first fact is that the six eyed sand spider is also known as the six eyed crab spider. Now, if you take other tarantulas and things like that, if you look at, say, Nandu chromatus, it's known as the Brazilian red and white, the Brazilian white striped bardia, the Bra Brazilian white striped red rumped bardia. And common names just confuse people. So. I try to stay away from them, but unfortunately for this video, I will be using it. Um, let's see if we can chuck something in and get it to feed. Here's a worm. Right, so I've chucked the worm in with it. I'm hoping as the worm approaches, they're normally buried in the sand at this point, but as they hold on with their legs, pull them in close. And in a second, there you go, flip. The spider's bit the underneath of the worm. Now it will take a few minutes, but the toxins and stuff will kick in and unfortunately that's the end of this worm. Right, getting back to the facts. The six-eyed sand spider originates from South America. And as you can see by this setup, it's found in very dry and um, like desert areas. This is for two reasons. One they don't need a lot of moisture. The moisture they get is mainly from their prey. And the being in a barren desert where there's nothing else around for miles is perfect for them because it means they have no predators. So they can just hide and hunt. And that's what they love doing. Um, the six eyed sand spider is part of the Sicarius family, which means either assassin, killer, murderer in Latin. And there's a very good reason for this. Oh, where I'm still struggling a little bit. This will probably go on for a couple of minutes, but it won't last too long. Um, getting back to the facts, the spider gets its name due to not only the potency of its venom, but the fact that it didn't do it on this video, but it can strike without being seen because it's normally buried underneath the sand. And they bury themselves by digging a little pit with their front legs, wiggling their body into it. And then a bit like flippers on a pinball machine, just flick sand over the top of their body, which is why if you even now, if you look at the spider, when I'm zoomed in on it, it's the same color as the sand. And that's purely because it's hairs bristle like hairs. I've captured tiny little particles from the sand, which make it exactly the same color as its surroundings, which is why you'll get to see lots of different colored sand spiders, purely because of the different sand that they're on. Um, another fact about this spider is that it is actually a cousin of the recluse spider. And like the recluse spider, does not like to be bothered. So, People that know about the recluse spider know that it is venomous and quite bad. But this one is a whole new ball game. Um, the six eyed sand spider is a lot like a trapdoor spider when it comes to capturing prey. And to be honest, if I was a spider, it would be like me. It's very lazy when it comes to it. It normally just buries itself in the sand and it can wait hours or days for something to walk by. 
uh, sand spiders don't eat as often as tarantulas and things like that. They don't need to. They don't grow as big as a lot of tarantulas. I think the body gets to maybe an inch and a half, two inches maybe, with probably the leg span of three inches on top of that. So it's not as big as a tarantula. Um, now we get on to the scarier side of things, I would say, but the reason why people ask me why I keep this tarantula, because there are 38,000 38, species of this spider discovered, but scientists believe that there are 200,000 that are yet to be discovered from this species, which if they found out 38,000, I would, well, not dread, I would like to know the spiders that are out there, but I don't know, we'll have to wait and see what the future holds, I suppose. All right, guys, so the venom of the six-eyed sand spider has the highest level of toxicity of any spider on the planet, making it the most venomous spider on the planet. Now, I know people will say, what about the Brazilian wanderer? What about the Black Widow? What about the Sydney funnel web? Yes, they are all able to kill you. But this one takes it to another level. It's purely because you've never heard of anyone being bitten by a six eyed sand spider is the reason you don't know about how bad the venom is from these. Um, there are very few, if any, bites from a six eyed sand spider to a human. There's rumored to be two. One person died. The other person had a limb removed, which is the only way to survive. Um, but as I said, these are not confirmed. So there is no actual facts of anyone being bitten by a six eyed sand spider. And if they did, as I said, either remove your limb or unfortunately that's the end for you. Um, but not all bites from this spider and a lot of other spiders will result in certain death because it's purely down to the spider if it wants to inject venom. They don't always inject venom, but it's purely up to them. That could just be a warning and a puncture wound, or they could inject the venom. And if it did, as I said, that's not a good scenario to be in. And the six eyed sand spider is so deadly because it has a very powerful hemolytic and um, like power that means it breaks up and opens all your red blood cells, releasing a hemoglobin that will go into all the surrounding fluids and just spread throughout your body. But not only that, along with that, it also contains a necrotic effect that physically rots the tissue. And it also means that the cells will be damaged and the red blood cells will start to leak. So this will lead to, if you were bit and you were injected with venom, you could physically see your arm rotting away and there is no way for the blood to coagulate. It will not stop bleeding. So this is why this spider is so potent when it comes to the venom. And this is why it is stronger than anyone else's. Um, other little facts that you might not know, unlike the four named ones that I've said before, the Sydney funnel web or the Brazilian wander or the red back black widow from Australia as well, they all have anti-venom. This spider here, there is no anti-venom at all for this spider. So as I said, removal of a limb, if it bites you on your body or somewhere that can't be removed, your neck or something like that, then unfortunately that would be the end of you. They've tried to work. There is a woman that is in a university in America. I'm not sure what her name is. She's commonly known as the spider woman. She's been doing research for years on these spiders 
and they've been trying to find an anti-venom, but so far they have had nothing that can stop the effects of the venom, which is probably why people ask me why I keep this. I'm just fascinated by these spiders. They can't climb the side of their tubs. I could leave the tub off, but I've got two young kids, so I don't want to do that because my kids are stupid enough to put their fingers in. But yeah, this is an amazing spider. Um, I don't think we're going to see much more of the worm now. The spider could sit in this position for hours. So I think we'll draw an end to the video there. I hope you've all liked it. If you did, remember, subscribe to the channel. As I said, it's getting a bit of a revamp at the moment. There'll be a lot of new things. Um, smash that like button. Hit me up with a comment below. I'll try and get back to everyone normally do. And as always, I've been Al. You guys have been awesome. Arachnids, peace, one love.